friendly beaders, how are we? I hope you're all okay and doing well. So here we are then with another tutorial. So if you remember when I made the last video where I made all these gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous icicles for your Christmas tree. If you haven't seen that video yet, go back and have a look to see how we make those. I mentioned that I was going to be making um, some netted bracelets and teach you, hopefully, how to do it. So let's have a little look at this one then. So this is done in 4mm pearls with 11 OC beads in between and joined with 15 OC beads. And I've put on a little rose gold coloured clasp. It's not real rose gold obviously, but a rose, <laughs> rose coloured clasp little lobster clasp with a jump ring on the end. Now if you're making for somebody you're not sure of the size you can always add a bit of an extender chain on the side there so it will fit anybody. Ideal if you're going to be selling your bracelets in a craft fair or you're gifting them for Christmas time. So that's that one. And then I also made this one in four mil um, little pearls. And this is like a hematite grey colour with 11 OC beads in between and 15 OC beads and I made a um, clasp using a 10mm pearl bead now I thought to myself well there's some people out there who are allergic to metal clasps or allergic to metal so this would be a fantastic way of gifting somebody your jewellery or selling on craft fairs whatever um, and they can still wear your jewellery. So there we go, one for all. It's beautiful, looks so nice on, look nice with the black dress for Christmas time. And when I was playing with the beads, I made this little, um, little, I don't know what you'd call it, a little section, and just added a silver bead on each side with an eye pin and then just turned a loop at the top and you could put these sections together to make a nice necklace that would look good or um, put them together and make a bracelet or it could be you could put this on a bit of thonging a little bit of leather or something and just have that as your focal or you could make a charm by putting this on a head pin and then just turn your loop and oh they've been nice earrings actually Nice earrings to match. So onto a head pin. That's a good idea, Jane. <laughs> I do have them occasionally. Onto a head pin, a nice bald head pin would look nice. And then attaching to your ear wire. Now there's a nice idea. Um, but today I was playing around with some six mil pearls. And this is how I got my sizing. So 6 mil pearls with 15 OC beads and an 11 O in between the pearl. The, I didn't feel that it was right. I felt like the pearls needed a larger bead. So on the last round then of my sample I thought right okay I'll try it with an, um, an 8 OC bead in between the pearls and I think that will work much better. Still leaving um, the 15 OC beads as, as connectors but just upping um, the size C bead that go in, in between your pearls. So if you're going to be making a 6mm um, pearl bracelet, and I will say this grows a lot quicker than what your 4 mils do, this will grow a lot quicker and obviously it's thicker but will still be beautiful, then you will be needing 8 OC beads. If you're going to be doing the 4mm pearls, you will just need 11 OC beads. So, today then, I have my 6mm pearls and I'm using this lovely like a olivey, olivey, rich olive green 6mm pearls. I'm going to be using 8 OC beads in a matte chateau's colour. Now I had these bees about 15 years and unfortunately the it, they are by Mayuki 
um, but the company I bought them from, Bobby Dazzlers, are no longer around, unfortunately. So those are my 8 OCBs I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using 15 OC beads in a chateau colour. Unfortunately I can't give you any numbers or anything like that because this is how I bought them. I just saw them and liked them. And you will be needing some thread. I'm using um, Superlon thread today, but if you've got 1G or um, um, what are the other names of threads? Um, Nymo, I suppose you could use it with Nymo if you've got Nymo. But these, this company, the Superlong company, um, do so many different colour threads, it's unbelievable. You can get, well, you can get lots of different colours, so I suggest you give those a check out. And um, so that's what I'm going to be using today. But like I say, 1G or any of the other threads will work just as well. You need something that's a thread like this rather than a fire line because you want it to um, flow. Is that the right word I'm looking for? You need your, if it was fire line, it'd be a lot stiffer. Okay, so this one is more pliable. Is that the word I'm better looking for? So you want something that's more pliable. And a 10 inch, a 10 inch. <laughs> A 10 inch needle, craggy. A size 10 beading needle, and today mine, I've got a brand new beading needle out for today's project because all my others are really bent. Look at this one. It's bent. Bent. It's bent. <laughs> and a pair of scissors to cut your thread. Now I'm going to be using a bead for my closure again. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is a 10 mil uh, crystal bead, but you can use whatever um, bead that you want to use. Could be a nice big pearl, it could be a focal bead that you're going to be using. Anything. Um, I'm not going to be showing you today how to add a clasp. I'm going to be doing it this way. Okay, so get your bits and pieces together. By the way, if you're going to be using 4mm pearls, get your 11 O's together and we will be right back in a second, guys. Right then, guys, I've just um, put a lighter bead mat down because the bees didn't show up very well on the darker one. So all I've done then is threaded my needle with uh, quite a lot of my thread. Now I am using today this Superlon thread. It comes in so many colours, it's unbelievable. But with all threads we know that um, it can be tricky. So I put a little bit of lotion on my hands and run my, the thread through, pulling it a little bit, stretching it, and that does help um, with knots but no doubt we will get some knots it's just the nature of the thread you can use one uh, what's it called uh, 3G or Miyuki thread or whatever beading thread that you've got so have a look at my mat then I've got my 6 mils my 8 O's and my 15 O's if you are making the um, bracelet with 4 mils your counts are going to be different. So I'm going to be using five C beads, 15 O C beads in between. You will only be needing three. Where I'll be picking up an 8 O, you'll be picking up 11 O. I will periodically through the video remind you of, um, <laughs> otherwise <laughs> you're going to get lost. Um, I'll remind you of the beads that you're going to be picking up, okay? So for the 4 mils, you're going to be picking up 11 O's and 3 15's. For the 6 mils, I'm going to be picking up 8 O and 5 15's. So then, get your needle threaded and let's get going. So the hardest part then of this video, really, of this video, not the video, of the bracelet, 
is the very beginning is when we're starting off because it gets a bit loosey-goosey now relax your shoulders let's get into this relax your shoulders give your hands some exercises take your time it's not a rush we're not racing this is supposed to be enjoyable okay this is what we do to distress ourselves a bit of bead therapy right so let's get going then if you're picking if you're making the four mil you'll pick up four mils I'm picking up six mils so we want a pearl an eight o or you might be making the four mils and using eleven o's a pearl eight o a pearl eight o so you want on your needle three pearls with three seed beads okay so the four mils eleven o seed beads six mils eight o seed beads okay pull these down your thread like I say it is a thread thirsty um, project this but I'm leaving my uh, spool attached so that if I run out of thread one way I can when I can see that I'm starting to run out of thread I'll start adding my clasp okay so we're going to come from the tail end then through all these beads again so all through your pearls and your seed beads again. Trying hard not to pierce your thread chain would be good. Running our fingers through our thread as we pull it through and it'll help with any knots. Look, I can see I'm getting a bird's nest. Just stop if you see your thread starting to bird's nest. Just stop undo it and carry on okay and we want a loop so you will have this pull our thread a bit closer together and we're going to go through all these beads again to give ourselves a sturdier base but like I say it will be harder at the beginning than what it is because we've got nothing to hold on to have we at this stage we've got nothing to hold on to so I'm just placing my working thread over my finger it just bring you in a little bit so look away if you get a little bit motion sickness I'm just going to pull you in come on camera there we go a little bit I've got my working thread over my finger, it just gives, and I'm, I've got my tail thread through these other fingers. It just gives us something to hold on to and um, keeps our work nice and tight. So I'm just wanting to come round now. Come on Fred, don't be naughty today. Please don't, I've put lotion on you be good just coming around here's our tail thread I'm aiming to get towards there and then I will go through a couple more beads okay so there's my tail thread here's my working thread I just want to go through another couple of beads coming out of an 8-0 or 11 if you're making a smaller beaded bracelet okay until we have this okay so our working our tail thread is coming out of the pearl and our working thread is coming out of the seed bead so then now we're going to pick up if you're making the four mil beads you're going to pick up three 11 O's. If you're making the six mil with me, we're going to pick up 
five. Five fifteens. <coughs> Excuse me. An eight o, or you might be picking up an eleven o. Pick up your three fifteens for the four mil. I am picking up five. Okay. Jumping over the pearl and bringing our needle through the next available 8OC bead. Place our thumb and finger over our work. It just helps steady things. Pull our needle through. And we shall have this, our first little loop going all the way around our pearl. Repeating what we've just done then, in my case it's five, in your case it may be th it may be three. Five, an eight, in your case it may be an eleven, and then another three if you're making the four or five if you're making the six. I seriously hope this isn't too confusing. I was toying with the idea of sticking with the fours but I thought no, the guys will be intelligent, they'll know what they're doing. As long as I keep reminding you I'm sure you'll be okay. So holding my thread over my finger going through the next eight o turning our work towards us a little bit so we're working in the right direction over we go picking up the same again three four five for me an eight o for me my seed beads and coming through the 8 -o. My tail, I'm just going to extend my tail a little bit. That's it. So now we have this. All our pearls are surrounded by our 15s with little points on the end of our larger sea bead. So our aim of the game then now is that we need to come up to our tip sea bead. So we're just going to travel from where our thread is exiting we're just going to travel up our 15s and come out at our tip bead. Okay. And pull our thread through. Don't want the bird's nest, so just stop and relax your thread. And what we want to do now is we're going to be putting a pearl in between our tip beads. So here's our tip bead, here's our pearl. She says as she drops it, picking our pearl up. And we're going to go through. She says. Our tip bead. Putting our thumb and finger over it so we're going to try and not let our beads get too loose. And pull it up. Put our thread over our finger it helps. <laughs> Pick up our pearl. 
here's our next tip bead. Making sure we don't catch any 15 O's and pull our thread through. Wrapping our, our thread over our finger, pick up our next pearl and through the tip bead. Now you can see that the tip bead is attached to this pearl. Brilliant, that's what we want. So through the tip bead This being difficult, but the 15s are sort of slipping into our 8-0s. No worries, get that needle in there. And I'm going to go through going to go through the next pearl right to it, right next to the tip bead and pull our thread through. Drop it. <laughs> this is the hardest part because we, we've got nothing to hang on to yet. So we need to steady this, this layer that we've just added where we've put our big pearls on. So what we're going to do is just come through the next ato and the pearl turn our work come through the next ato and the pearl I think the coating on these pearls is a bit poor and I'm catching it on the way through Turn, give it a pull, pull your thread towards you. We're working in a clockwise um, way, so we need to, if we're going to tighten up, we need to pull it the way that we're working. Through our ato and pearl. coming out of the next ato. Or you might be coming out of your 11 now. Give it a little tug and this is what we have so far. Okay. So we're just going to repeat now what we've just done. It's a very repetitive stitch and it looks, people will be looking at your jewellery thinking, how on earth have they done that? Ah, we know the secret, don't we guys? We know. So picking up then, either your three or your five, I'm picking up five, either your 11 -0 or your 8 -0. and again, either your three or your five. Jumping over the pearl and coming through the next ato seed bead. Pulling our work, our thread through. Turn, wrap, three or five. Larger seed bead, three or five. Jumping over our pearl into the next seed, uh, eight o or eleven o. Pulling our thread through. 
chain wrap 305 305 going through our next 80 right now that we've gone a little bit we've got something to hold on to if you can get because our aim is to come up to this tip here as you're coming through your 80 if you can get through some of your 15s at the same time then go ahead and do it if you can't or you're not feeling confident just go through the 80 and then come through the 15 o's after okay so I managed to get through four 15s, so I'm just going to go through the next 15 and come out of my 8 -o. Or in your case, it could be your 11 -o. And we're ready to start it all over again. So, pick up your pearl, going through your tip bead, turn, pearl, tip bead, making sure that we don't catch any of those little 15 no critters. Turn, pearl, coming through the next ato, making sure we don't catch any 15s. something and again we're going to strengthen the top of our work of the bees that we've just added so going through all the pearls and this and the tipsy beads gone round at least once. Giving our work a little wiggle and a little pull. Make sure that we exit out of our seed bead, whether yours be 11 o or an 8 o like mine. And there we have our work so far. And look at that, I mean, that would make a lovely little beady bead. And what you could do, here's an idea that's just come to mind, you can make lots of these, just tie your thread off either side. You can make lots of these and then put a bead in between so you could thread on to tiger tail and make um, a necklace like that or a bracelet. That's a nice idea. Ooh, I do get them sometimes don't I? I do get nice ideas sometimes. <laughs> oh, here we go then. On to our next bit. So we're going to be making our little loops with our tip beads. In my case, it's five. Yours, it might be five, it might be three. Our tip bead. Going through our eight o. 
or 11 turn and again and that's it guys it's just a repetitive repetitive pattern but everybody be really wild be thinking how on earth have they done that when they look at it how have they done that and it's your secret isn't it well it's our secret how something really pretty and intricate isn't at all Now that we've got our pattern down, do you know it's really hard to talk and count at the same time? <laughs> so I'm going to come through the 8 0 and up as many of the C beads as I can, the 15 0 C beads as I can. Stopping the bird's nest, turning, coming through the tip bead and this is it now we can have a nice little chat now that we've got um, we've got the pattern down and we know what we're doing just take your time how are you all been then are you all okay what's the weather like where you are goodness the it's the temperature has dropped here in Cornwall oh my word freezing freezing it's a good job I've got um a heating I suppose you can hear you might be able to hear it in the background um I've got heating in my little bead room up the top of the garden it's a good job because I'm telling you now I won't be up here for nothing freezing so keep turning keep adding our pearls Remember when we come to the end of adding our pearls we need to um, ground and strengthen it, don't we? Giving our work, if it looks a little bit loosey-goosey, giving our work a little pull and twist our beads going through. I went out last week um, last Wednesday so a week today I went out with my friend and uh, we went to one of my favourite places in Cornwall Talon Bay and um, we did the Talon Bay to Polpero walk along the coast path now normally when me and her get together something normally happens something goes wrong or we get lost or falls falls over, somebody falls over, it's normally me who falls over, but hey, um, <laughs> and uh, I hadn't bought that warp for, gosh, 30, 30 odd years, because a lot of the coast path has uh, gone down into the sea, so they've had to um, redo it over the years, and this, that and the other. Anyway, the only mistake we made was I went, oh, might be down here, because I haven't been for so long. Might be down here, Haley. I said. We're looking for a monument. But I went, <laughs> these steps went down, there must have been 30 plus steps that went down towards the coast. I said, maybe it's down. And there were, um, old steps if you know what I mean they weren't um, they were made steps but <laughs> quite hazardous I suppose in a, in a bit of a way if you're unsteady on your feet best not go down they're like wooden on the ends and then made up of mud and what have you um, and anyway <laughs> went down all these steps and it led down to a little private beach which wasn't, wasn't where we were aiming to go and Hayley goes I can see the monument up there and there in the distance. <laughs> it's this monument that we've been aiming for, so when you were on the on the right path. And I'm not kidding you, it was so steep. I was like, oh my word, I can't believe I've got to go all the way back up there. 
but we did. We went all the way back and then back up these steps and then got on the right path, which was uh, interesting. And then went all the way round to Polperro, walked into Polperro, did a bit of um, a walk on the beach and uh, walked all the way back. Yeah, it was a lovely day. Lovely. The sun was shining. And can you believe it? T-shirt weather in November. T-shirts. And then now today, it's like, crikey, wrap up warm, whatever you do. Make sure you're all wrapped up warm, because it's freezing. My feet are like, even though I've got this heater on, my feet are like blocks. I might have to go put another pair of socks on. So, there we are. What have you been doing? Two, three, four, five. Been on any silly walks where you've got lost or whatever? Oh, guys, I don't know if you watch me on on um, metal detecting videos, but you won't believe what I found last time. Oh my word! I found. I'm gone. Three, four, five. I found a gold full sovereign. The video's worth watching for comedy value <laughs> and shock. I've never been so shocked in all my life. We were just about to go back for lunch. And I get this absolutely stunning signal. And it's like, I said to Peter, oh, I bet it's just a Mewtube. Everybody else had been finding silvids and amids and the rest of it. And um, I'd found nothing. I've had some, I had some old coins. But nothing of any note, if you know what I mean. I said, oh, it's probably a Mewtube. It goes down. Splinking gold sovereign coin. Talk about heart attack. I had to sit there. I couldn't stand up. My leg. <laughs> oh, so it's worth watching for comedy value. So up then uh, your 50 nose and into your tip bead. And away we go. On to the next bit. So here we are adding our pearls back on. And then we had a dig last Sunday just gone and um, up in Devon and didn't find anything. Rubbish. I thought, oh my word, I've got the gold case, I've got the gold case. But um, luckily, nobody else, <laughs> not luckily, that's not what I meant. What I'm trying to say is um, I didn't feel too bad then finding nothing because nobody else did either. So, I mean, there was a couple of bits of coins come up and what have you, but, yeah. I thought, well, I've either given the gold curse to everybody, because they say this gold curse, it's a bit of superstition, really. They say that if you find gold, um, some people don't find anything for like 12, 18 months, got a gold curse. Um, so that's what I thought I was getting, I thought I got the gold curse. Very happy with the coating on these pearls. Bit bitty. So going through your, uh, your um, pointy bead then, and the, I managed to get into the pearl next door. I'm giving it a bit of a pull because it's getting a bit loosey goosey. Back to the beading aid. Don't want to hear me rabbiting on about metal detecting, do you? Really. Making our top bead secure, giving them a bit of a pull, so we don't want to be seeing too much thread. And coming out of a 8 -o or 11 -o. And that's it guys, isn't it? That's all we need to be doing. Repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. Sometimes it's nice, isn't it, to do something we haven't got to think about too much about, you know, too much of. 
um, it's just about making sure that we pick up the right number of beads in between. One, two, three, four, five. And practice makes perfect. If you've never done anything like this before, make one. If it's a bit you're not happy with it, cut it up and start again. It's all practice. Rome wasn't built in a day. As I always keep on saying, this is therapy, you know. It's um, it's not a rush. It's therapy. Sit in Get a tray, sit in front of the TV on an evening or listen to a um, a book obviously you can't read a book but listen to one <laughs> let's have the TV on in the background radio on whatever it is that floats your boat and just have a bit of time you know even you can even sit with your other half while um, you're busy doing this with the TV on in the background while he's watching his favourite film or she's watching a favourite film you can just carry on and um, and they'll never know you're having a bit of therapy while the TV's on or the radio's on or whatever it is that you like to do while you're beading Always making sure that we come out of our tip bead. And time to add on our pearls again. My working tail's getting a bit short, so I'm just going to pull my thread up out of shot. You can't see me doing it, but I am, I promise you. There we go, running my fingers through my thread again. If it gets a bit tangly, just loosen your, hold your thread and just let your work dangle and then that will get rid of any um, loops that you might have. Or when you start, your thread sometimes starts to twist, doesn't it? So not loop, twist. So carrying on then. And then I'll leave you in a minute and let you carry on and we'll come back when it's time to put our clasp together. So I'll just do this last one with you. Because otherwise you'll be here for hours sitting with me. Yeah, these pearls have got a nasty coating and I'm not liking the uh, coating on these at all. Causing me a few issues. Come on now, behave. My thread's a bit twisted. I haven't done twisted I thought, as much as I thought I had. Tightening up then our top beads. What colours have you chosen to do? Well, I thought this um, green's gorgeous. I'm not normally a green person, but this is really nice. This is lovely. I'm really liking this colour green. That's not something. I don't think I've even got any green clothes. Yes, I have got green clothing. If when I go, sorry to bore you, but when I go metal detecting, I wear green. <laughs> um, but as a norm, I don't wear green. I like greys. Does that make me boring? to wear clothes wires. I like greys and things. Right then guys, so I'm going to leave you now because otherwise it would be a really, really long video. I'm going to leave you, let you carry on 
being repetitive. If you get stuck, just rewind the video back a little bit and uh, pick up where you think you've got stuck. And I'll meet you at the end when we're ready to add the clasp. See you in a little while. How are you getting on? Are you, are, are you growing? Look, I've got a nice long one as well. <laughs> right, so I'm running out of thread. I've got about, what, about um, 18 inches or so. 18 inches or so of thread left. I don't like working with little tiny weeny bits of thread um, because I do want to weave it in and do some half inch loops. But I'm at the stage now where I want to add um, one side of my clasp. So I'm going to be end. So I'm going to be adding this end. Okay. So I have just added my pearls and gone round and strengthened it. So now we're going to be making our clasp end, our first end of our clasp. So. Onto our needle then, exiting a 8 or 11 bead, pick up three 8 or yours could be th uh, 11 o's, and a pearl. Three. Eight O's, your big bead, and then a 15 on the end because we're going to use our little 15 as our turning bead. Okay, well, that's gone inside the hole, so that's no good. Where's that gone to now? Oh, did I knock it off? I might actually. Now I'm going to keep with the bigger beads actually, so scrap that. So three eight O's or eleven O's, your pearl, three eight O's or eleven O's, your big bead, and then an eight O or eleven O, all according, of course, how it's always been all the way through the video of what um size pearls you're using. Okay. Come back through your. I'm just going to bring you in a little bit. Not too much. Come back through your focal bead or your larger bead. Down through your three C beads and through your pearl. Sorry if you can hear tip tip tapping, it's my pooch, she's come up to spend a bit of time with me. That's because I've turned the heating off in the house. <laughs> so we've um, gone through our pearl. Pick up three sea beads. Coming over now to this um C bead in your round. So we've brought come out of this one and now we're going to go into this one. Okay. Come through your pearl and your next eight O or eleven O. So we've come through this ato after adding our three, come through the ato, through the pearl, then through the next ato. Okay. Picking up three eights or elevens, coming up through the pearl, up through our three beads, up out of our focal bead. Give it all a bit of a wiggle and pull your beads around just to tighten it up. 
through our turning bead at the top back down our focal back down through the three and out of the pearl now for some unknown reason mine's all gone loose what's going on here why is that a kid no worries find your thread which which is loose up mine's not playing ball so I need to find out where that thread is It's a conundrum. That one. What's going on? It's all going Pete Tong. There we are. I think I've got it now. That's it. Has got it. That's better. Okay, so that's all tightened up now. So then coming through three of the beads. If I look down here, I can see that originally I went up this side and went through my beads. So coming down, I'm going to come through the opposite way and go through the beads on this side I can see that my thread went up that way so I'm just going to go up those beads through the center oh, and I've managed to catch it straight away my turny bead at the top Come down, all the way back down, I see I've got two threads through that one so I must need to go through here, come down these beads, I've just caught my thread around I need to go through this way now coming back round coming back round I've just looked at my camera I don't know whether I was in focus then we widen you out a little bit I hope I was got two threads now running through there I'm just going to stop and I'm just going to have a look back through and make sure that um, all that was in focus so I'll see you back in a second yes I'm happy to say it was all in focus thank goodness for that otherwise I'd have had to undo it all and take all my beads off and um, do it again <laughs> right so I've secured my um, 
first under the clasp. I'm down here now at the pearls. So I'm just going to run round these pearls a second. And then I'm going to start putting some uh, half inch knots in. I don't want to do it up at the clasp end. So I'm coming out of a NATO. I'm just going to come down now and come down these um, 15s. into the eight, come out of the pearl, I mean you can put yours wherever you like, your um, half inch knots, I'm just coming through, I'm just going to come down and get my needle in the fifteens. Through the eight, right, I'm going to put a uh, half inch knot in here now. So, half inch knot, then you've seen me doing before, pick up a thread in between your beads, pull up a little loop, needle through the loop, and pull it down. And there's your first half inch knot. I'm going to come through again the next pull. Pick up a thread, down to make a little loop through the loop, slowly pulling that knot down through the eight hip. Come down the fifteens. Eight. Get yourself in a nice comfortable position, don't be pulling yourself all over the show. Through the thread, pull a little loop. So you put as many in as you feel necessary. Let's go through the pearl, come through the eight. Come through the fifteens, come through the eight, loopy doopy, she says. You know, I've been saying it for I don't know how long now about getting my eyes retested. I'm going to have to really bite the bullet and go. Get that side, I can't see. Go through the next bit. <laughs> oh god, I wasn't blowing a raspy to you guys, I was blowing a raspy to myself. Through the thread. Little loop. It's like the dentist, you know. I was going to the dentist regularly. Um, before lockdown and before the dawn pandemic and since then I've not been I bet I've been struck off their list now because it's been that long what's it been now, two years? all the days are rolling into one, I don't know hence why we bead make it all go away okay so I've done um, quite a few little knots there now. Just going to run down these 15s. She says. There you are. Run down them 15s and then that'll do. Get me little skizzes. Chop off. I do remember now because we've put. Um, this closure on um, one part of our clasp on this does elongate your your uh, bracelet so we've still got a bit of beading to go on the other end Ooh, isn't that 
pretty. Still got a bit of beading to go. So all I need to do now, because I've kept my bobbin on this end, aren't a clever and aren't a good. It's been widening out a wee bit. Ooh. Sorry, sorry. Um, I'm going to cut off a good amount of thread. Put a bit of lotion on my hands, run my hands through the thread and carry on beading this side. And then I'll come back when we're ready to do the other side of our bracelet. Don't forget guys about your sizing because I'm putting this type of clasp on. You won't need to make your bracelet as long but I will give you some measurements as what I've got so far. I so far bead work wise I have just shy of five inches so um, that clasp is a good inch and we're going to have about half an inch the other side so I reckon another inch of beading and we'll be ready don't forget don't worry about stopping trying it on yourself seeing how you feel and don't forget as well, because of the nature of the stitch, it probably will need to be made up a little bit bigger. Okay? Right, I'll see you back in a little while. Cheers! I just thought I'd best come back and tell you um, our tail end, because now we're starting the other end, obviously comes out of a pearl. So all we need to do is take our needle and thread through the 8-0 and then start again with your pattern okay guys just thought I'd better come back and just say that to you just in case um, um, you were wondering what was going on and putting placing your beads in the wrong place so that was all okay see you in a little while then Here we are then on the home straight now. I'm just going to pull you in a wee bit just to. What I should do is. Right, so I've just added on my last of the pearls. How have you been getting on? You've been okay? Have you managed? It is one of those um, projects. I am not the quickest beater by any stretch of the imagination. I really am not. So these take me a good while to make. So anybody who is on the receiving end should be very grateful. <laughs> kidding. Right, okay then guys. So we're going to be making our um, class bit, this bit. <clears throat> okay, to go over our bead. Right, so we want three of your larger seed beads the pearl which is a bit of decoration I'm just going to elongate my tail a little bit there we go right now the trickiest part is working out how many beads we need to go around our ball so I'm just going to add on, I don't know, 10 to start with, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I can see that's not going to be big enough. So another 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10. Now on this, my numbers won't be the same as your numbers, it's all according what you are um, using as your bead. Okay, so let's just have a little look. I think just one, maybe another one or two beads. Make a pig's ear of it, why don't you? There we are. And then... Make that 
should slide on nicely. Nothing else. Once I've gone, I might just add one more. That's it, me done. That's me done. So if you're using the same bead as me, two, four, six, eight, ten. 22, 23, 23 beads I've got on there. Right, so now we're going to come down through our pearl. Pull everything up nice and tight ish. Pick up a 8 0 for me, for you it could be 11 0. Up. What am I doing? Pick up three. Oh dear lordy. Three. Three beads, guys. Three. For me, it's eight o's. For you, it could be um, elevens. Over onto your next <coughs> big bead between your pearls. For me, it's eight. For you, it could be elevens. Go through your pearl and your next bead. For me it's eight, for you it could be elevens. Pull your thing up in the middle, so it gives you an idea. Pick up three of your eight o's or eleven o's and up through your pearl and through some of your beads in the loop that we made a few seconds ago. Right, now the idea is now we need to go through all these beads. Get through as many as you can at a time, or as few as you can. It's up to you. Starting to get dark. Been up here in my bead room all day. It's getting dark outside, dusky. So time must be getting on. <coughs> Through one set of your seeds into your base row. I would come out that side, so we're going to go the other side. So you can see my thread is on this side where I went when I started. No, I'm going to go through the other side, go through the pearl next door to it. Go through our base, 8 -0 or 11 -0, up through our seeds up into the pearl and start going through our loop so we're strengthening our clasp now aren't we giving it a bit of strength going around bobbing along to our pearl I'm just checking now to have a look which have they all got no this one hasn't got two on so just have a look at your bees and if they've got two on just go to the one that's only got one on one string I mean as in one attached it's only attached one side of your bead at the base through the bottom for a pearl, get knotted, bring your knot out, pull it through. Right, let's just have a look now. 
that's got two on, that's got two on, that's got two on. Hmm. I might just go up again. There's still lots of room in my beads, so why not? The clasp is probably the bit that will take the most um, strain. to go through there so let it go through or oh, maybe not quite right, your pearl Jane Get attached to my clasp. Looks like it's getting a bit. Um, if your thread gets a bit twisted and you've only got you're on your short end, just run your fingers through your thread. Drop your needle, run your fingers through your thread, and then it'll all unravel. There we are. I've got the state of my needle. It was straight when I started. <laughs> right. Back to it. So we're going back up. Now, <clears throat> pearl. Yeah, this will be the last one. Why am I whispering? So if somebody's going here. <laughs> oh, guys! I've just realised as well. I've been up here all day, and I've had no dinner. I've had no lunch. Well, what do you call it? I call it. Um, oh, I'm gonna go and sneeze. Oh, bless me. I call it, sometimes if I'm all according, if I'm being posh, I call it breakfast, lunch and dinner. Otherwise I call it breakfast, dinner and tea. I think it's all according where you come from, isn't it? And when my nan, bless her soul, when she was alive, she used to call it breakfast. Because it was at the break of day. Breakfast. Oh, Nan's funny. And isn't it funny how times have changed, like, you know, from when um, our grandparents or my grandparents were young. Times have changed. They have. And supper. Do people still have supper? Like that. I've got I've got onto food because I'm hungry and I've I've realised I've had no lunch or dinner. So there we are. So on to the final stretch then now. So I'm going to come back through this A tail, through that pearl, through that A to O. Oh, it's already starting to go down them fifteens. So that'll do. Starting to go down the, um, some of the 15s then in the bracelet. Will it go through the 8s as well? Yes, it's gone through the 8s as well. My thread's going all twisty twisty. What's going on here? And we'll go through the next lot of 15s. Making sure I don't miss any out. Oh, the end is nigh. The end is nigh. Through the my ato. Copy your 11. And then we're going to pick up a thread. <clears throat> Pull our little loop. Needle through the loop. 
and that puts a knot on top of our thread. Come through. Pick up a thread. Pull a little loop. Needle through the loop and pull our thread. And that's going to go through the next pearl. I was hoping to get through the CB. I think my me, me needle's bent the wrong way, if you know what I mean, to get through. And then I'm going to come down. These seed beads, these 15 nails. That's okay, it's come straight out. Through the eight and the pearl. Pick up the thread. Pick up a thread, thank you. <clears throat> Pull your knot through the through the eight o. Just going to come down some more fifteens. Hope you're faring with these 15s better than me today, guys. I'm, <coughs> I'm struggling with my eyes. Now I've got my glasses on, look. I've got my glasses on. Ooh. <laughs> oh, dear. Through. Little half itchy. After this one would be okay. Run it through so I can't see my thread. I know it's in there somewhere. I need like a magnifier in front of me. <laughs> a magnifier as well as my glasses in front of me. It's all according to how you feel. If you feel that you've done enough with your little knots, then you tie it off. I might just go through there, I might just do one more. I might, I'm just going to do one more. Or don't ask me where, I've just got, I'm just going to. Colors did you choose to do? Do you choose some nice pretty colors? Have you got a friend in mind that you perhaps want to do a bracelet for that they've got their favorite color? Or maybe it's something because they look great dressy, dressy these do if you're dressed up for Christmas and they look equally as well all could what colors you use equally as well um, uh, for casual so that's it then guys I'm going to cut that off that's me done for a minute put that aside just um, tidy my own mat up a minute well, let's have a look I'm going to widen you out There we are then, give yourselves a really good pat on the back. You've made yourself a fantastic 
beaded netted bracelet. How are they, how gorgeous is that? It's so pretty and I, lo I absolutely adore this crystal on the end. I think that's gorgeous. You could even wear it that way, couldn't you? So that way was on the top of your wrist. So use that, but then you're thinking, well, I've spent all that time making that. <laughs> For anything like me, it's like, I've spent all that time making that. But you could wear it either way. You could either wear it that way, or have that as a hang you down bit. And do be aware, because this is a bit big for me, yet when I um, when I was measuring it like so with the beads, like with the netting bit like that, thinking, yeah, yeah, that's about right. But actually, I could have stopped a good couple of rows back and that did fit it perfectly. So just be aware of that. So let's just have a measure. Um, yeah, that's taking that bracelet now to an eight, an eight inch when really only needed seven. So yeah, I could have stopped a good few rows down here. Can you see what I'm saying? Let me widen you out a wee bit more so you can sort of see what I'm trying to tell you. So, bracelet as you just seen was quite big on me, and if I measure it from here to here, because you don't really count that bit, because that bit goes over your, you see it's 8 inches. So really, to make a 7 inch bracelet, I'd have only have had to have made that, I could have not done 3 rows. Because each row consists of three beads. Can you see? Let me just bring that. So one, two, three. I could have not done three rows, so it would have taken me to there. Because each row consists of three beads. So I'd have saved nine um, pearls. Not that it makes a difference. There's, we all come in different shapes and sizes. There'll be somebody that that's made for out there. That that will fit beautifully. And I've got an idea on who I think that will fit nicely. And I haven't seen her for a good while. So I'm thinking that I might um, gift it to her. So there you are. So that's our bracelet for today then. Can you see how much different, how chunkier the, the, it is made up in it in the 60s? It's a lot chunkier, isn't it? Compared to the 4s, well it's bound to be, isn't it? There you go. So I really, really hope that you enjoyed um, this video today. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. I might have um, a little look at these. Now, don't laugh at these. I'll just come back to them in a second. I made these years ago. These are my Christmas spiders. I made these years ago. Years and years. I think it's probably one of the first um, metal wire work. Should say not metal work. I'm not at school. Why? <laughs> the first wire work I ever did, and I downloaded a um, off the internet. The Legend of the Christmas Spider. And you can look for it up on the internet. And I downloaded it and printed it out. And um, I'll read it to you. A long time ago, a mother prepared for Christmas Eve. She cleaned and scrubbed her home, chasing the spiders from the living room with a broom. The spiders fled to the attic and listened to the excitement below as the Christmas tree was put up and decorated. When all was quiet again, the little spiders crept back downstairs to see the beautiful tree. They were filled with happiness as they crawled along every branch, admiring the glittery beauty of each ornament. But alas, by the time they had finished climbing through the tree, it was completely draped with their dusty grey cobwebs. When Santa Claus came, he smiled as he looked upon the happy little spiders. 
and whether he knew the mother would be heartbroken when she saw the dusty tree. So he reached out and touched the webs and magically turned them into silver and gold. Now the Christmas tree sparkled and shimmered and was even more beautiful than before. And so there is now the custom of having a spider ornament amongst the thread. Isn't that lovely? I can't stand spiders. I am arachnophobic. But I quite like these because I know they're not real. <laughs> so I don't know whether I'm going to do a little, um, like I say, these are ancient. I don't know if I will do um, a tutorial on how to make these. We will see. Or I might do something completely different. Who knows? Or... So back to, days, back to today then. There we have it. I sincerely, truly and hopefully you've got the knack down now. I, I hope that I came across well and you um, managed to follow along on the project. I um, don't think there's anything else to say other than thank you so much for watching. I hope that you go on to make lots and lots and lots. And I uh, hope I've given you some other ideas along the way. And uh, that's it then for today then guys. Thank you very very much for watching. If you're new to my channel and you'd like to subscribe, I'd be more than happy to have you along. If you can give me a thumbs up on the video. Thumbs, 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 thumbs. Makes me, um, makes me warm inside. It makes me happy to think that you uh, enjoyed the video. So there we are. I'm going to stop rabbiting on now. Enough said. So until next time then, guys. Take care. Do yourself. Stay safe. And a very Next level. Next level. <laughs>